this is Eureka Math, Grade 2, Module 3, Lesson 12, and you'll see something like this, possibly in the homework that says count from 582 to 700. Using place value disks, change for a larger unit when necessary. Okay, and then it asks a series of questions about what we did when we counted from 582 to 700. All right, so what this means is that your child has already done part of this question before they even answer these questions here, and this is what they've done. They'll have something like this. So we started out with 582, and I'm just gonna make a note on here for myself that we're, we're counting to 700. Okay, now what I'm doing here is on the left-hand side, we have these blue circles represent hundreds. In the middle, we have greens to represent tens, and on the right, we have reds to represent units. Okay, and now we're doing this, remember, to increase number literacy so that we're not just memorizing methods, but we have good understanding of how numbers function. And you can imagine, this is helping our students understand that we don't want to carry around 700 pennies or 70 dimes. That doesn't make any sense. This lesson is to help understand how to cash in 10 pennies for a dime. Okay, so we start counting out. So we started at 582, we have 583, 584, 585, 586, 587, 588, 589, and now I have 590. Okay, but why carry 10 pennies when I can trade that in for one dime? Right, so now I trade out those 10 pennies, and now I have 590. And if you want to think about it in terms of coins, we have 590 in terms of coins, but I didn't need all those pennies. And this is what we mean by change for a larger unit when necessary. And then our child keeps going. So we're at 590, and they keep going like this. So at this point, they have now added 10 more pennies. They're at 590 plus 10. And I'm going to trade in those 10 pennies for another dime. So I'm at 600. All right, so I didn't need those 10 pennies anymore. And actually now I don't need 10 dimes. I can trade that in for some sort of dollar coin. And so there I have 600. And it's all in terms of the largest possible units. And I'm at 600. So then I keep going. I have 601, 602, etc. And we do keep doing this all the way up to 700. With that in mind, let's look at the questions and see if we can figure these out. So I'm counting from 582 to 700 using place value disk, just like I showed. So let's think about our decision making. The way this question is worded is it says, did you make a larger unit at 590? In other words, did you have to cash in something? Did you trade in pennies when you got to the 590 value? And the answer is yes. Because at that point, I had 10 pennies, and I traded those 10 pennies in for a dime. So I made a 10. Okay, what about when you got to 600? When you got to the number 600, did you trade in anything? Yes. To get to 600, we traded in 6 dimes to get one of our dollar coins. So I traded from 10s to 100s. Okay, what about at 618? Did you trade in anything at 618? Uh, no, I didn't. Since it was no, I go to the next phase. It says, okay, in order to trade in, how many units do I need to add? And here we needed to add two more ones before I'm allowed to trade in 10 pennies to get a dime. Does this make sense? All right, let's look at 640. Did you get to trade in something to get to that? I sure did. I got to trade in 10 pennies to get another dime, so I traded it up to 10. How about at 652? When you counted to 652, did you get to cash anything in? Uh, no, I did not. And if I wanted to cash in some pennies or dimes, for example, I needed to get eight more ones before I can do that. And lastly, when you got to 700, did you get to add anything in? Did you get to trade something in? Yes. I traded in my 10 tens or 10 dimes to get another 100 coin. Let's look at one more and see if we can make sense of this. So this time I'm doing the same exercise, but I'm counting from 368 to 500. And you can imagine your child would have had something like this. They're counting from 368 to 500, right? So they're going to start off by adding, there's 369, there's 370, but at that point, let's trade in all those pennies to get another dime. Okay, so we've traded all those in. So now I know I'm at 370, and we keep doing this until we get to 500. All right, now let's see if we can answer the questions in the book, keeping in mind that we have gone through this experiment. Okay, so now when we're looking at this, we're at 368, we started counting. When I got to the number 377, did I get to trade in anything to get to that number? The answer is no, I did not. And how many ones or tens am I missing in order to be able to do that? I'm missing three ones before I can trade in for another dime. 
Okay, let's look at 392. Same thing. Do I get to trade in anything? No. I won't be able to trade in anything until I add eight more ones. At that point, then I can trade in. All right, let's go about 400. So number three, 400. When I got to the number 400, at that point, I've could have traded in 10 red pennies to make my 10th dime. So then I can trade in 10 green dimes to make 100. So I've traded in my values to get to 400. At 418, can I trade in anything? I cannot. Two more ones until I'm able to transfer those pennies into a dime. And the same goes for 463. I couldn't trade in anything at that point either. I needed, or how many ones do I need? I need seven more ones before I'm allowed to trade in. And then when I get to 470, did I trade in anything to get to the 470? Yes. I got 110, right? Because when you went from 469 to 470, you traded in your pennies to get another dime. I hope this makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions on it. I'd be glad to help. Thank you for watching.